the sound of their voices, the door posts and treasures shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the servants flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which had taken with toys from the altar. With this he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the word of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Father God, your word is read now in our presence, and we ask that by your Holy Spirit we would be led through it, that it would become living and active in our lives, that it would make us fit indeed to serve the King. Well, let's open our Bibles at Isaiah 6, and our question for this morning is well, what are the qualifications to serve the King? What are the qualifications? You know, I came to a conclusion at one point when I was in training that the more letters a minister had before their name and the more letters they had after their name, the more suspicious I would be of the theology of that minister because they would have spent years removed from people and inserted in books. And most of us don't live like that. We live with the ordinary and the mundane. Also, I've often pondered, how much does it cost to acquire letters? Well, even the ones that I've got, the answer is thousands upon thousands of pounds, and I didn't pay for that. Taxis pay for that, and the church help pay for that. But the reason that the investment is made is because of the conviction you need to somehow be able to justify having the letters. That's like a circle there. And that means you're allowed to be a leader of God's people. And I've pondered, is that the best way to be qualified to lead God's people? An inordinate amount of thousands of pounds spent acquiring letters after your name. How about instead of trying to live by letters, we live by words? Instead of acquiring academic letters, let's acquire living words. And what I mean by that is those who serve ought to live in light of not academic letter qualification, but living word from the Scripture. Now, this morning, Rod and Isabel will be ordained as leaders within the church, elders. And just like with any task, someone might say, well, I wonder what qualifies them? What qualifies them? What are their letters? Well, I don't know what their letters are, and I'm not really interested in what their letters are. The letters are not the important thing. It's the Word which is important. And I can guarantee you this, the Word lives in them. So, four things as we go through the passage. I think if uh, we want to feel a sense of qualification of a call, then we want to have a sense of time. And I, I look for that in people who would serve. Is there a sense of time? Do they understand the time in which they are living and the time in which they are serving? Then I look for, do they have a sense of sovereignty? What's the nature of the king they serve? a God of good intentions, or a Savior of absolute sovereignty? Who do they believe they serve? Third, a sense of brokenness. And finally, a sense of wholeness as to what the goodness of uh, the gospel is. So, let's take the first point, a sense of time. Look in verse, in verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and a train of his robe filled the temple. 